Well, 2019 marks 50 years since the killing of anti-apartheid fighter Imam Abdullah Haran while in detention. His family released a statement uh, surrounding his death at the launch of the Imam Abdullah Haran Foundation today. Now, the foundation is going to host a series of commemorative events uh, to look at the life and legacy of Haran. Uh, let's bring you more on this now and the significance of this foundation. It's the foundation coordinator uh, who is joining us this evening. It is Mr. Kasim Khan. Uh, Mr. Khan, good evening to you. I think many people would say... Congratulations on the forming of this foundation. Uh, tell me about how this came about. Hi. Uh, thank you, Gareth, for having us. Uh, uh, this uh, foundation was launched by the children of Imam Abdullah Harun, uh, the three of them, uh, Muhammad, uh, Shamila, and Fatima, and with the grandson, Khalid Shamis. Uh, they called together a group of people and decided that a fitting way of remembering uh, Imam Harun and his services to the community as well as his sacrifices and most importantly to seek justice uh, for uh, him and for the family that a foundation be established that will focus on social justice issues and so this is how the organization came about today it also happens to be uh, his birthday uh, today the 8th of February uh, he was born in 1924 uh, and it's so sad that come 2019, it's the 50th anniversary of the killing of this, uh, of this man, and, and yet many people may not even know who he was and who he stood for, but he was killed in detention along with many, many other struggle heroes. I mean, I have some of the names here, and they'll be familiar to you and our viewers. Nicodemus Huate, uh, Solomon Modepane, James Lenkwe, just to name uh, a few of those. Kasim, this is a man who left his mark in history. Tell us about him for those who might not know the name. Yeah. So Imam Abdullah Harun was obviously killed by the apartheid uh, government, particularly for his political activities. What is not so well known about him, apart from his religious activities, is that he was equally at home on the rugby field motivating youth. He, sub he encouraged particularly people in cu cultural and arts activities. Um, he is much uh, uh, praised, particularly um, at the time in, in the 1960s when it was uh, very difficult to enter the African townships, as we call them, here in Cape Town, uh, townships such as Langa, Guguletu, where he was uh, fondly known as Mfundisi. And in the activities, in his social welfare activities that he had uh, conducted in his, uh, um, he came across um, many of the uh, political active activists of the time. And one of the two hallmarks about him is Imam was always known particularly for being the trustworthy person um, that could hide political activists. He spoke out on every platform that he had, and more importantly, he even participated in the armed struggle by sending uh, young people abroad um, to, be, to join the liberation movement. So a, a, a multifaceted figure. Um, and I think the, the part where he particularly angered the state was that he w had a strong relationship with Canon Collins from the Defense and Aid Fund. And one of the things he did in the 1960s was to, um, on, the can uh, on the Defense and Aid Fund, yeah. visit families of detainees and make sure that their needs are met. Yeah. Uh, let's talk, uh, I mentioned in my introduction to you, Kasim, that uh, there's going to be a series of commemorative events that have been put together by the foundation. Uh, give me an idea of what some of those events are and when they're going to, when they're going to start. Yeah, so much of our activities, we want to, f we want to focus on the, uh, on the new generation, the generation of young people that do not know who these struggle heroes were. And so much of our activities in uh, the month of June, for example, will focus on youth. Much of our activities in the month of August will focus on, uh, on women, and particularly women such as his wife, who is still with us, 93-year-old, Ante Khalima. Um, and then a month of July, quite a number of cultural activities and typically the type of uh, um, activities that we have would be um, uh, cultural events, events that are political in nature, events um, that are on the sports field, so uh, lots of uh, getting young people involved in sporting activities, having a Harun Cup and then quizzes on particularly people that were killed. So so that young people can know who Steve Biko was, who Ahmed Timur was, uh, who, I, uh, who Nicodemus Huate is, mm. and so in a way that is competitive but also uh, in educational. Um, much of our activities will take place from the 28th of May, which is the day in which he was arrested, until the 27th 
of September, which is the day in which he was killed. So we, have, we are having a hashtag 123 days in which he was held for incommunicado, and people are encouraged to, uh, to quote it when they tweet um, for those days. We appreciate your time in coming to speak to us uh, this evening. Thank Kasim, thank you very much indeed from our Cape Town studios uh, this evening. The uh, National uh, Co Foundation Coordinator of uh, this foundation for Imam Abdullah Haran, which has just been launched, but as you heard there, uh, going to be coming up later in the year with a, a whole series of events. In case you missed those dates, uh, that interview will be on our YouTube channel uh, in a short while from now. Ronald Mas